In the news this week, America mourns on the anniversary of 9-11, while Australia addresses terrorism. We have a special report tonight. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Daniel Staniskov. Good evening. Australia's fight with terrorism intensified this week as the federal government raised the public alert level to high. While America grieved for the victims of the 9-11 attacks, Australia arrested alleged ISIS recruiting members. Darren McLean has this special report on international terrorism. 13 years after the 9-11 terrorist attacks, a symbolic memorial service is held each year in New York City and Washington DC to remember the victims. 47% of Americans are still affected by the horrors of the 9-11 attacks, as well as the recent beheading of American journalists by Islamic extremists. Local terrorism experts are not surprised. The attack was a very uh, unexpected event uh, to any, any, any society, and it was devastating to the whole country. Meanwhile, in Australia, the federal police have arrested alleged Islamic fighter recruiters in Queensland. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott has announced the country's security is on high alert. The government's advice is not based on knowledge of a specific plot, but rather on a body of evidence that points to the increased likelihood of a terrorist attack in Australia. Murdoch University terrorism expert Samuel McKinder believes that young Muslims went to Iraq and fought for ISIS, were radicalised. He speculated there will be further disputes as the fighters come from different cultures and backgrounds. When it comes to establishing policies, you'll find that uh, these people will be killing each other because the people who have come from different parts of the world do not understand the local conditions in Iraq. They may not speak the dialect there. And so if, even if the world left them alone, these people are going to kill each other. Darren McElane, WAMN News. Meanwhile, the Islamic State has released another beheading video, this time British aid worker David Haynes. The video, titled A Message to the Allies of America, shows David denouncing British Prime Minister David Cameron before being beheaded. Haynes was working for the French humanitarian aid agency in Syria in March 2013 when he was kidnapped by a rebel group who later sold him to ISIS. Anti-shark cull activists have expressed their joy after the Environmental Protection Authority recommended the state government not implement its shark cull policy. The Premier has made it clear that he will not challenge the decision. Daniel Edwards reports. The Environmental Protection Authority has advised against the WA government's controversial catch and kill shark policy. The EPA chairman, Paul Vogel, expressed a lack of confidence in the program, which was going to run for the next three years. Anti-shark cull activist Natalie Banks applauded the EPA and is satisfied with the outcome. I'm asking Albert Jacob and Greg Hunt to uphold the recommendation of the EPA to understand that the CSIRO, the scientists and the community are against this drumline policy. Premier Colin Barnett is disappointed with the decision but has chosen not to appeal. We're heading into summer, we're heading into school holidays where Perth beaches, beaches in the southwest, will be crowded with uh, families on holidays, school children enjoying our fantastic beaches. What can I do to try and protect them? That's always been the issue for me, and it still is today. Opposition leader Mark McGowan said the shark culling program was a big waste of money. This has cost the taxpayers a fortune. It's made our beaches less safe. It's caused embarrassment to the state around the country. It's caused huge community outrage and one person is to blame, and that is Colin Barnett. A total of $1.3 million was spent on the trial and 68 sharks were killed, none of which were great whites. In related news, Coburn Mayor Logan Howlett is now pushing for the continuation of the eco-shark barrier, which ended in April this year. We believe the eco-shark barrier is an important um, aspect in the overall package of ways and means of going forward to mitigate any shark attacks along the West Australian coast. The EPA's decision is open for public appeal and will close on the 25th of September. Daniel Edwards, WAMN News. Perth youths were spoiled this week after they were given the opportunity to select their favourite showbacks for this year's IGA Perth Royal Show. Kira Taplin investigated what were the favourite showbacks. 
Product safety tests were carried out to ensure that all 310 show bags meet the standard for this year's IGA Perth Royal Show in September. There's been a very high standard of compliance this year and uh, it looks as though the contents of them are appealing as well uh, for the children that uh, they are meant to be supplied to. Inspectors from the Department of Consumer Protection and the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission together examined show bag contents looking for choking hazards, sharp edges or banned products. Children across Perth were selected to pick their favourite show bag for this year's Royal Show. So, what are they like? Really, it's about what really makes you happy, not, and it's about the cost. Especially if they see something like a sort of game that they like to play, candy they like to eat, that sort of thing. Oh, well, they've got this variety. They've got toys and stuff that you can play around with. And we have a range of children here today. They've won competitions, been selected by the... Uh, Minister for Consumer Protection's office. So about 25 children from 10 schools are here and it's certainly a big event for them. The Royal Show kicks off on the 27th of September and runs for a week. Kira Tuplin, WAMN News. The government has announced plans to improve mental health and raise awareness of suicide prevention. The Mental Health Commission will invest $340,000 over the coming year. $100,000 of the investment will go to a partnership program with Netball WA, while the remaining funds will go to Suicide Prevention Community Small Grants. Netball players, including Stacey Rossman and Courtney Bruce, have already signed on as ambassadors. Hundreds of people joined the Calgary Walk for Muscular Dystrophy over the weekend. The event gave the local community an opportunity to support those affected by neuromuscular disorders. People gathered at Calgary Rotary Challenger Park for the meaningful walk, wheel, row or run. Dealing with muscular dystrophy is not easy, but the loss of body doesn't equal to the loss of spirit. Thomas lived an amazing life. He didn't accept no for an answer. He accomplished so much while being, while being challenged with so many obstacles. 11-year-old Jaden is Calgary's 2014 ambassador and was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy at age 2. She does not let that stop her from skiing, swimming and living her life to the fullest. It's the 16th annual walk. This year, it raised nearly $500,000 for the association. It's been a real inspiration in terms of um, thinking about what ways that we can increase the awareness about muscular dystrophy and neuromuscular disorders. Um, and, you know, the walk today is, is a great example of that, of how we gather the community together. Dustin Lowe, WAM News. And here are some of the other top stories making news around the world. South African Blade Runner Oscar Pistorius charged with manslaughter for killing his girlfriend Reva Steenkamp. The judge said authorities failed to prove the killing was premeditated. Mr Pistorius is free on bail awaiting sentencing next month. Meanwhile in Asia, Chinese people around the world gathered to celebrate the annual moon festival. Despite cloudy weather, the mood was festive. Adults and children across Hong Kong enjoyed the festivities by lighting lanterns and having mooncakes. And those are the top stories of the week. You'll read the latest news on our website. Look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good one. Bye for now.